So in chemistry class, we talk about an ideal gas. So what's an ideal gas? An ideal gas is basically a gas that we use for all the calculations. So uh, Boyle's law, Charles' law, the ideal gas law, all these calculations rely on a couple of assumptions. So, you know, when we talk about ideal gas, it's important for the calculation we've been doing. The main two assumptions for an ideal gas is there's no intermolecular forces, meaning that the gas molecules themselves are not attracted to one another. And the other assumption is that the gas molecules themselves don't take any volume. Uh, this is the idea that this little molecule here, as you can hardly even see on the, on the screen, this little guy here takes up this entire area inside this uh, box by just movement, but not its actual self. So it basically we assume that this molecule's volume of self doesn't have any volume, which is assuming it's not there, but it takes up space. So, and this is important when we do calculations because we need to assume that the gases aren't sticking to each other, because that would make the volumes be a little smaller than we expect. And we need to assume that the gas molecule itself has no volume, or the volume be a little bit bigger than we'd expect when we're doing the calculations. When do these things fail? Well, when it starts getting cold out, what does uh, water vapor start to do? Water vapor starts to condense or to actually to uh, deposit onto uh, grass in the form of frost. So intermolecular forces do become important when the temperature gets really cold outside, and they do start to condense together. And when does the volume of a gas molecule actually become important? When it gets to high pressure, we start we start shrinking this box down here. This molecule starts taking up an appreciably larger size. So again, the basic idea about ideal gas is there's no intermolecular forces and no volume that's taken up by the gas molecule itself.